tell you where names in case someone forgets them. I'm Jetson. I'm Flotsam. He's Flotsam. He's Jetson. We want them to be recognized by anyone who spots them. I'm Flotsam. I'm Jetson. He's Jetson. He's Flotsam. Flotsam and Jetsam as Kate Peter Lotsam. The songs sung by Jetsam are written by Flotsam. I sing all alone. You'd wonder how he gets them. Yours very sincerely, Flotsam and Jetsam. Down so free is what the choirs sing. Oh, who would like our job today is nearer to the thing. It's quite a problem getting news and putting it in verse. But when there ain't no news to get, the problem's even worse. Man bitten by a dog will neither interest nor amuse. It's got to be the man who bites the dog to make it news. The Canadian Quins and the English Quads are facing a future of fearful odds. Such interest does the world evince in the Harrison Quads and the Dion Quins. These tots in cots like, like these, these within, within their, their pods. pods. First dozing, then posing, poor little, little Quins, Quins and Quads. quads. Sing a song of film stars direct from Hollywood. They've all discovered England as we thought they would. Arriving by the shipload, landing by the score. Your policemen are so wonderful, we've heard it all before. Hey ho, it's a funny world. You're lucky to be a Viennese. Anything in fact but British, for by acting cute and skittish, you can collar all the top-notch fees. When a Budapest soprano gets a froggy in the throat. There's another in Vladivostok that goes rushing for the boat. She can't speak a word of English, and she's seldom on the note, but she's glamorous. Yeah, she's wonderful. She's marvelous. Yeah, she's blinking awful. So our advice to all you girls is not to sit around and sob. You can put one over neatly on the managerial mop. By calling yourself Jujitsu, catch as catch can ski and land yourself a job. Good idea, Jetsamovich. Very sound, Plotsamsky. Women we see are determined to rake up new styles of makeup, going to take up evening gowns and make them skimpier. Eyelashes green and lips very scarlet, so that a violet won't know his Charlotte from, say, an average clown at Olympia. Dress shirts for men will have washable fronts, so that's what the outlook promises. Wait till you see Mr. J. H. Thomas's. We'd like to sing more rhymes about the modern times. To prove how things go round and round and round and round and come out here. We can't do that there here, you know, we can't do that there here. So that's, that's all for, for the, the moment, moment, and it's all meant as chaff. Flotsam and Jetsam and the trademark is a... <laughs> so cheerio till the next time, unless anyone forgets them. Yours very sincerely, Flotsam and Jetsam. Okay, okay. the page once more. Page five. Tonight we have the 100th edition of an old favorite. Once again, we stop the roar of London's busy traffic to bring you some interesting people who are in town tonight. Among the diminishing trades of London is that of the cat's meat man. But we have with us tonight Mr. Henry Hopkins, who has been selling cat's meat for the last 50 years and whose business is still going strong. Mr. Henry Hopkins. Yes, sir, still going strong. <laughs> you know, cats like strong meat nowadays. Just like my old woman does when she goes to the pictures. Oh, cats have their likes and dislikes then, Mr. Hopkins. Oh, yeah. Cats are funny things. You know, I've got some very particular old cats on my books. You know, there's one in particular, a retired publican's wife. Yeah. You know, she wanted something very special for her cat. I think she had a Persian pussy. But anyway, she used to have. But something special she wanted and something special I had to get. 
So I went and got a grand national winner. I see. <laughs> and you know, after one plate full of that meat, that cat, it jumped all round the furniture, hopped over the grand piano, cleared the table, and made a beeline for Aintree. And you got the blame. Yes. She tried to make out I poisoned him. Yeah. Took me to court, she did. Yeah, and I lost the case. Mm -hmm. And where do you get your meat from, says the old beak. Rotten rose, says I. Oh, indeed, says he. No wonder the poor cat was poisoned. Pay five pounds. And uh, how many cats do you serve a day? About a hundred. Fifty of them I get paid for, and the other fifty I feeds for nothing to stop them from following me round. Do you know, in my fifty years as a pussy's butcher, I must have supplied meat for about one and a half million cats. Good gracious, you must get sick of them. Me? <laughs> Not me. I'm just going home to feed me own cat. Far removed from horse slaughter is another slaughter we have in the studio tonight. I refer to that well-known actor of old melodrama, Mr. Todd Slaughter. Mr. Slaughter has murdered thousands of people and been hanged thousands of times on the stage, of course. Mr. Todd Slaughter. Yes, and I'm still alive to tell the tale. In my career, I've murdered hundreds and hundreds of people and come to a sticky end more times than I care to remember. And have you any favorite method of murder, Mr. Slaughter? I keep a perfectly open mind on the matter. I murder by strangulation, poisoning, shooting, stabbing, or with a razor. In Maria Martin, I murdered poor Maria by shooting her in the red barn. In Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street, I polish dozens of them off with my razor. The desire for strong meat is so wide that I am now performing in a new old melodrama. Is there any such thing as a new old melodrama? Most certainly. Take Stephen Hawke, for instance. As double-crossing an old villain and racketeer as ever lived. A kindly old gentleman, and yet a fiend. Terrorizing the whole countryside so that no man, woman or child New peace or safety. I'm going out to bowl my hoop. Oh, I don't think you ought to. I want to bowl my hoop. I'm going to. Oh, very well then, but don't go too far from the house. Just looking at a nice little boy's garden. Well, you better get out of here at once. Can't I look at a nice little boy's garden? No, you can't. My father doesn't keep a garden for nasty common people like you to look at. But I'm doing no harm. So you say. I'm not for sure about that. I believe you come here to steal and go and call the servant. No, 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 don't do that. Come here, my little man. Have you ever heard of a paradoxical paradiddlum? No. What? Never heard of a paradoxical paradiddlum? No. They only grow in India. I brought one here for you. Come here, my little man, and I'll show it to you. Master Terence! Master Terence! Oh, Master Terence! What's happened? Sir. Look, the red marks on the arms. And the arms twisted behind. Is the... Yes, the spine's broken. The spine breaker. You came out of there in a mighty hurry. Yes, I'm afraid my artistic ability was not appreciated. Beautiful house, too. Yeah. Looked it. Going back there tonight? I'm afraid not. Not for some time yet. I fancy it will be too well guarded. Told you today you'd be unlucky. Saturn's too high in the heavens. Is he? I shall be compelled to send you there if you don't drive more carefully. Remember, Mr. Stephen Hawk is a very nervous passenger. <laughs> may I come in? Of course you may, Julia. Julia, do you think you ought to be out alone? I mean, with this terrible criminal, the spinebreaker, still at large? Oh, don't worry about me, Matthew. I'm old enough to look after myself. No spinebreaker's going to get his hands on me. Besides, 
He only murders very wealthy people. But joking apart, Julia, this man really exists as we've all had ample proof. I hear there was another poor creature found murdered yesterday with the same terrible marks on his body. Oh, I know, Mr. Trimble, but I'll be all right, really. I only just came for a moment to see Father, but I can't get any answer from his door. Let me try. All right. Can't you knock any louder than that? Yes, but I don't want your father to come too soon. You're wasting your time, my boy. Am I? Ah, uh, well, perhaps not. But I've just remembered that your father told me he had some important business which would keep him until late afternoon. If you'd like to come in and wait. Oh, thank you, Mr. Trimble. I won't wait. I really must be going. Must you? Yes. I've got to get ready for my party tonight. And there's so much to do. Don't be late, will you? I should be the first one there. The early bird, you know. How many dances do I get? How many do you want? All of them. Greedy. What are you dreaming about, Matthew? Oh, everything. Yes, things certainly seem to have moved in the right direction since you took over that warehouse. Nothing like having young blood in a business. You can't have them too young, I say. Trimble and son, eh, Father? Yes, my boy, Trimble and son. Perhaps you'll be putting that sign in a new door soon. What, move from here away from me, old friend Stephen Hawke? Not after all he's done for us. He has been wonderful, hasn't he? Without his money to build that new warehouse, where would we be? Yes, my boy. When people talk of flint-hearted moneylenders, they can't have met Stephen. That sounds like Stephen coming back. I thought I'd like to inquire how you got on today. Eh? Hey, what's that? I mean, uh, with the business deal in the city. Oh, not as well as I had anticipated. Some little whippersnapper chose to interfere. Dear me, I am sorry. But it only proves what I was saying to my son just now. A great mistake to put anybody into business too young. You're quite right. But he's a good lad. I'm glad you like him. It may influence Julia. Julia? Haven't you ever noticed that he and she... You mean he wants to take her from me? But you wouldn't object if he made her happy? I'm jealous of everything concerning Julia. Yes, you couldn't love her more even if she were your own child. You're the only one who knows she isn't. And sometimes I'm sorry I told even you. You know that I shall never say a word. Be careful you don't. All I've done, I've done for her sake so that she may never know poverty or want after I am gone. I hope she'll always remember that, no matter what she hears about me at any time. Why, my old friend, you talk as if you were a criminal. <laughs> That's how most people regard moneylenders, isn't it? Not when they want to borrow, of course. Only when the time comes to repay. You mustn't say that, Stephen. I don't know what some people would do without your help. Ourselves, for instance. Julia's friends are my friends. All. Oh, by the way, Julia was here to see you. She seems very excited about her party tonight. <laughs> Happy, eh? You <laughs> spoil her, Stephen. She's my one weakness. And you shall see all the grand people I have coming to her party tonight. Lord Brickhaven, Marquis of Powers, Countess Puddinger. That's just a few. So useful to me in my business, you know. People with plenty of money. Plenty of jewels. I like to know them, to know their habits. And you'll be surprised the business I do with them. Not here, of course, but in their own homes. Alone. Well, I leave you. I expect you're busy. My, you do meet with some important people. I beg your pardon, sir. Well, I should think so, too. I heard you were honouring me with a visit today, Sir Franklin. Well, what is it? It's uh, just a little matter, Mr Hawke. Not foolish enough to ask me to lend you more money, I hope. No, 
I fear that would be useless. Then perhaps you've come to repay me some of the money you owe. Well, uh, not exactly. Oh, then what is it, my friend? It's about Lord Brickhaven. Oh, yes. I'm looking forward to seeing his lordship tonight. I hope you asked him to wear his famous emerald ring. You know what pleasure the sight of precious stones always give me. But uh, his lordship is not coming. No, 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 you're joking, my friend. I shall be bitterly disappointed if he is not with us. And you wouldn't have me disappointed, eh? It's not my fault. I did my best, but he's due at Bath tomorrow evening. He's due at my party tonight. He never promised. But I requested. It's not much I ask of you, but what I ask, I expect... Oh, it. you're breaking my wrist! I apologize, but Lord Brickhaven must be there. And his famous emerald with him. It will lend tone to my party, you understand. How? How? Fool! Idiot! Don't! Have you no brains? Can a coachman be bribed? Have you never heard of accidents on the road? Trees that have had to fall? See, is there or else? Lord Brickhaven and his emerald, eh? So they're the next. I hear that emerald's worth ten thousand pounds. You hear a lot, my dear Nathaniel. Values are sometimes a trifle exaggerated. We shall find out in due course what it will fetch. Lots of people would pay almost as much to know who the spinebreaker really is. Yes, but you wouldn't be so ill-advised as to accept their offers, would you, Nathaniel? No, 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 no. Let it remain a nice little secret just between us two. I'll never split. Don't worry about that. But you have to be careful. What are you snivelling about? Mr. Franklin, Suppose he spots our little game. Supposing? You're always supposing this or supposing that. Oh, that's all very well, but... And remember, you're not paid to give advice. You're paid to do as you're told. All right. Have you done as you're told? What about the widow Simpson? Told up, lock, stock and barrel. And her six miserable children? Turned out into the street. Good. That'll prove to her that Stephen Hawke is not to be trifled with. What do they think I am? Philanthropist? How much did her goods realize? Seventeen pounds, ten shillings. Is that all? Sold up all she had? The next woman who comes to borrow ten pounds, I must see she has more security. Where is it? Hmm. Money has a nice feel about it. Hey, Nathaniel? He has. A nice large emerald has a nicer feeling, eh? Come. Come. Bad for a miserable little money lender. I wish shipping agents could make as much money as money lenders. <laughs> Lord Brickhaven. I'm glad you were able to prevail upon Lord Brickhaven to stay in town this evening. Yes, but what a risk. The confounded coachman nearly caught me. One should always take risks. After all, what is life but one big risk? Delighted to see you, Lord Brickhaven. I was beginning to be afraid we should not have the pleasure of your company this evening. I really should be on the bath road at this moment, but an accident happened to the wheel of my coach. And before my fool coachman had finished repairing it, it was too late to start tonight. Then we are all indebted to your fool coachman. Ah, Julia, my dear, 
enjoy yourself? Wonderfully, thank you, Father. You have there a jewel for men to covet. So, for that matter, have you, my lord? My emerald, you mean, ah, yes. But I do vow you have the rarer jewel of the two. I agree with you, my lord. But to possess both. That would indeed be paradise. Again, I agree with you, my lord. May I, I have the pleasure? Well, I'm afraid I've already promised Mr. Trimble. Did you notice that? Our friend Archer doesn't look too pleased. So it seems. The gossips tell me that he hopes to be your son-in-law, Mr. Holmes. And the gossips, as usual, are mad. My son-in-law, lecherous brute. There is scarcely anything that he cannot possess once he sets his mind to it. You'll find that my daughter is the one thing that is beyond his reach. You are a brave man, my friend, to talk like that of Archer. If he heard, where would you be? In one of his filthy state prisons, I imagine. But rather that than he should marry my daughter. They seem to be dancing a lot together tonight. Yes, they make a lovely pair. You'd like to see them married, wouldn't you? Indeed I would, wouldn't you? Perhaps. When he's made some money. A most delightful evening. I'm so glad you're appreciating it. With all this youth about, it makes one feel young again. Yes, I was just remarking. You look at least 60 years younger than when I saw you last. God bless my soul, I'm, uh, I'm only 51, sir. You surprise me. Yes, I feel the recurrence of spring in my veins, you know. I believe it's the sight of your daughter that has done the trick. How so, sir? This party is to celebrate her 18th birthday, isn't it? That is so, sir. 18 is about the right age for a girl to marry. <laughs> I fancy them young, my friend. You appreciate my meaning. You do us too much honor, sir. Then I take your decision to be in the affirmative. I fear we are unworthy, sir. Do you mean that you refuse? No, 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 of course not, sir. Perhaps you'd allow me to call on you one night alone. Then we could get to grips with the matter. Oh, yes, to clinch the bargain, as it were. Clinch is the word, sir. Then you will back me up? Definitely. You'll find me behind you. Isn't my mistress looking lovely tonight? I hadn't noticed. I got other things to look for. You must be very tired. Wouldn't you like to sit down? Well, that would be nice. Oh, you've got no romance in you. I can imagine myself out there dancing in the arms of a man. Well, I can't. You appear warm, sir. Why not go out on the balcony? It will be lovely in the moonlight. I get, yes. Uh, perhaps you'll join me. If your lordship will excuse me. The night air, uh, my bronchitis. But later on, perhaps. Yes, a little later on. I promise I will join you then. It was spring and love was in the air. Came from the terrace. Oh, oh, Who is it? Lord Brickhaven. Why, I was dancing with him only a few minutes ago. Can I? No, no, stand back. Stand back, everybody. Is he dead? Lord Brickhaven is dead. Oh. Is it a stroke? His murder. The reason is not far to seek. The Brickhaven Emerald has gone. Oh, this is too ghastly. As I thought, the spine is broken. The spine breaker. My best friend. And this is what I've done for him. But to me, he'd be alive now. I brought him here, but I didn't know. I didn't know. Stop that raving. What good can that do? Why, what has happened? Has one of my guests 
been taken ill? You know, you know no one better. This is your work. I see it all now. But my friend... Stand back, stand back, don't come near me. He's the murderer, Stephen Hawke, the spinebreaker. Oh, I know that. Yeah. And the sight of Lord Brickhaven lying there murdered, his spine broken. Didn't have a moment's sleep all night. Really? What do you think of this? A nice piece of work. I bought it this morning. But I can't get over it. Get over what, my friend? The way the spinebreaker does his hellish work. What a grip the fiend must have. As I was saying, the lines of this statue are delightful. Exquisite work. The work of the devil. Some say he is the devil. Nine feet he stands, even an inch, with big hairy hands. You've seen him? Oh, of course not. Nobody sees him and lives. No. Yes. And I want to say how much I sympathize with you, too. Yes, I am to be congratulated upon my bargain. But for Sir Franklin to accuse you like that, why, it's absurd to think you could have the strength my to... My friend, I'd rather Didn't not... Didn't you hear him? He called you the spine brace. Stop! Why do you look at me like that? Your hands, they have sinews of steel. Well? Nothing. I... My dear friend, I think you're afraid of me. No, of course not. Then why are you trying to get away? It's so hot in here. I must get air. What's the matter, Father? You look like a ghost. Something has happened. I don't know how to say it. It seems impossible. My head's in a whirl. Sit down, Father. You look ill. I'm all right. Oh, well, come on, you must. Hmm? Well, where have you been? What's happened? I went to Hawke's office about ten minutes ago. Yes, and what happened there? Nothing. Nothing that you would understand. I expect I'm all unnerved after what happened last night. But tell me, Father. And then I ran out. And is that all that happened? Yes, tell me it's impossible. My old friend can't be this monster, really. No, of course not. For my own peace of mind, assure me I'm wrong in my suspicions. Out of the question. A kind old gentleman like Mr. Hawke? Julia's father commit a crime like that? Impossible. Oh, thank heaven. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, father, thinking him capable of such dreadful things. After all, his kindness to us. Joshua, my friend. Stuff <laughs> sheep's hearts, Nathaniel. You know I can't eat meat in the morning. I have a very delicate stomach. Just a little dry toast. Excuse me, sir. Mr. Trimble is here to see you. Ah, Matthew, my boy, glad to see you. Won't you join me for a little breakfast? 
Mr. Hawke, a terrible thing has happened. Oh, and what is that? Last night, my father was killed. Murdered. Murdered? My old friend Joshua Trimble murdered? I can't believe it. Who could have done such a thing? My boy, this is too distressing. Your father was my very dear friend. Yes, I know. That's why I want your advice. Willingly, my boy, willingly. Sit down. Sit down. Yesterday, he must have had a premonition that he was going to be killed. Oh, what makes you think that? He gave me a sealed packet to be opened with his will. If by any chance he died a violent death. He said it contained a great secret. Really? I wonder what that can be. But the will cannot be opened till after the funeral tomorrow. Then the secret is a secret still, eh? But oughtn't we to open the letter at once in case it contains the name of the murderer? No, no, my boy. Most irregular. In any case, it's safe until tomorrow. Where did you put it? Where no one will dare to go. Oh, and where was that? Still in my father's keeping. How do you mean? With the body and the will. It seemed the safest place. No one would dare to disturb it there. You're right, my boy. No one would dare to disturb it there. Joshua. Stephen Hawke. Don't keep away from me. Don't come near me. Mercy. Mercy. My murderer. You forced me to do it. You knew too much. You had to die. I had to kill you. I had to kill you. Oh, leave me in peace. I shall go mad. Cease your groveling, Stephen Hawke. You! You've told me all I had to know. We have an account to settle, you and I. Don't kill me. You love Julia. Remember, I'm her father. Spare me. If I do, it'll be for her sake. You mean, you let me go? Tomorrow I bury my father. You shall have till then. Good. Excellent. But after my father's body is laid to rest, beware. You shall be like a hunted animal. But as a fox is given a chance to run for his life, so shall you be allowed to flee. For Julia's sake, I hope you'll elude me. But to avenge the death of my father, I swear I shall never cease in my efforts to kill you. I'll do anything. I'll leave London. You shall know what is worse than death. Fear. Dread fear by day and night. Every living moment. Death is sure and swift. Too good for you, but this is better. Now go. Run swiftly. But I shall follow more swiftly still. I was wondering where you were. Julia, not in bed yet? Well, I'm glad. I wanted to see you before I left. You're going away, Father? Now, at once? Yes, an urgent business call. But, Father, at this time of night? I'm afraid I must. And I may be away some time. The business I have on hand may be long and difficult. Then I must pray for its speedy completion. All ready to go. Everything's on board. All right, madam. Goodbye, my darling. I think goodbye is such a horrid word. Yes, but it's a beautiful word, too. For it means God be with you. And that's how I want you to take it from me. I'll see you off, Father. I hate to see you going out into the night air like this. Thank you, dear. Well, where to now? Anywhere. As fast as the horse can take us. To a house where a man may enter safely? No, you fool. A house we can bolt and bar. So that even the devil himself can't find us. You don't know where. No. You don't need a coachman. A bunch of cats will end of a sticker, do you? Ah, get on with it. I'm so 
so glad to see you. I've just buried my father. I know, my dear. I've thought about you every moment. You look so tired and worn. Come and sit down. I'm sorry, Julia. I've only a few minutes to spare. Why, what's the matter? I'm going out of London. You two are going away? Why do you say you two? Who else is going? My father, last night. He wouldn't tell me where he was going. He went away so strangely, so suddenly, almost as if he were afraid of something. Why should he be afraid? I don't know. I don't understand him. Or you. How far are you going? I don't know that. I only know I must go at once. Yes, yes, my dear. I can understand that. You want to get away from it all. But you must know where you're going. Listen, Julie, I'm going away. I don't know where, and I, I shall never come back. Poor boy. But it'll be all right presently, you see. Time heals all wounds. Don't you understand, Julia? I must get away for good. My father's death will always stand between us, keeping us apart. But in life, he always loved me. He always said so. In his life, yes. But in his death, he's made it impossible for us ever to meet again. He made you promise to give me up? I've taken an oath, an oath I cannot break. And I must be free to carry it out. Free? That's a big word, Matthew. You mean... You mean free from everyone? From me? Oh, but you can't mean that. Take me with you, Matthew. We'll go away together and forget all about these terrible things. You're making a difficult task doubly difficult. I can't do as you suggest. Nothing shall turn me from my purpose. I love you, Matthew. And nothing in my life could ever have been greater than my love for you. But your love is different. Yours is a love which can be overshadowed by sorrow and self-pity. A weak love which no woman would want. He has someone to see you, Sir Franklin. Has he said anything yet? Not a word. If he don't soon say something, I'll have the vapors. I'll make him talk. Now, tell me all you know. Who is the spinebreaker? If you tell me who the spinebreaker is, I'll have you taken out of here. To some other place, perhaps. Only worse. Pretty well. I'll be back later. Have everything ready then to make him talk. Right. This way. Here, show these two gentlemen up to the front room. Come this way, gentlemen. Aye, and take a tot of brandy to the gentleman. He ain't got a bad toothache. Put the bags down there. Don't bother about the brandy. I, I feel better now. Yes, sir. Nothing else I can get for you? No, nothing. And I don't want to be disturbed. Fasten the window securely. As tight as a drum. Good. How many miles from London are we? Too many for the horses like him. What parts are you making for, sir? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't know. You've come a tidy way for the look of your horse. Yes, from London town. Aye, and at a tidy speed, too. Yes, we kept the milestones busy. Well, you're not the only one who's ridden from London in Ari today. Oh, who's the other? Others, sir. Early this morning, we had a couple in a buggy. In a buggy, eh? Aye. What do they look like? Have you ever searched for a needle in a haystack, Nathaniel? No. But I've often looked for ops and a pint of beer. And that's much about the same. It would be just as easy for him to find us. He doesn't even know the road we've taken. We can sleep in peace tonight. We are safe. Can I open the window a little? No, no, not now. We are not as safe as that. Yet. A thousand thanks, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you.
me go. Let me go, I say. I didn't mean to do that. It's all right, it's all right. It's only me. Nine o'clock just striking. Double back. Go tell the landlord to get the buggy ready at once. Don't stand there like a fool. Hurry, man. Hurry. Hurry. I mean, are you are leaving, sir. Yes, that is so. But, sir, if you're not comfortable here, I have another room on the ground floor with a big window opening onto the street. No, thank you. No, 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 no. Look, my friend has the ague. The country air doesn't agree with him. It's the only reason why we're leaving you. See, here's a full week's money. So you lose nothing. Oh, thank you, sir. And now, just one word, Muria. My excellent friend. Yes, sir. In return, do me this favor. Not a word to a living soul that we've been here. Sir, not a word. <laughs> He'll talk. They always do. Good morning, sir. What can I do for you? Is your ale good? None better in the West Country, sir. Well, give me a pint. Certainly. Pleasant morning. Is it? Is there anything else I can do for you, sir? Do me the favor of fetching your master. Mr. Tompkins, you're a stranger here, sir. Yes. Will you be here long? I have no idea. Ah, good morning, sir. At your service. You wish to see me? Join me in a mug of ale? Oh, thank you, sir. Don't mind if I do. I'm looking for two friends of mine who I've reason to believe passed this way recently. Aye, many passed this way. And many on you with their company for the night. No, sir. I've had no guests for quite a while. But most of the two that were here an hour ago. Quiet, girl. What's this, my friend? Come on, tell Ow. me the two. Hello, what's the matter? Let me look at your arm. Ah, who gave you that? And who are you to ask? A friend who's looking for one with just such a grip. Aye. Are you sure you're a friend? He said he had many enemies. Which purse would you say was the bigger, this one or the one he gave you? Why, this to be sure. It outweighs the other by quite a lot. Aye, to be sure. Take it as a souvenir of me. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, which way did my friends go? Well, I promise not to tell. No need to tell, can't you point? Aye, to be sure. I'm afraid, Mr. Archer, you have called at a bad time. My father is away from home. Then I've come at a good time, for it was you I wished to see. About what? Oh, merely to pass the time of day. Shall we sit down? If you intend staying long enough to make it worth your while. Thank you. They tell me that young Matthew Trimble is also away from home. Why do you mention him? So you're off quite without male protection. You seem very well informed, Mr. Archer. May I offer my services? Oh, thank you. I have no need of them. Well, that remains to be seen. It's a peculiar coincidence that both your father and your sweetheart are away from home at the same time. I don't see why. Unless perhaps they are travelling together. They are not doing that. Or unless one is in search of the other for his revenge. Revenge? For what? His father's murder. But his father was murdered by that monster who... Murdered Lord Brickhaven in the garden of this very house. And whom Sir Franklin Hilliard has declared to be... But, but he was raving. He didn't know what he said. Surely no one believed it. One or two do. Matthew Trimble, for one. But he couldn't believe anything so stupid, so absurd. Has he said nothing to you? Then that's what he meant. But his mind must be unhinged. Well, two have the same delusion. But surely you don't think? I know. Sir Franklin Hilliard admitted it today. Oh, no, no, it's impossible. I won't believe it. But, my dear girl, why disbelieve facts? Facts? What are you here for? To blacken my father behind his back? To drive me mad? No, to offer you my protection. You need it more than ever now. You are alone. Who have you to look after you? Not your father. He needs my protection too. Do you realize that he is a hunted man? Hunted now by Matthew, soon to be hunted by the law? And yet it is in my power to ensure his safety. Can you? Will you? Yes. On one condition. 
Oh, I can't promise that. Oh, come, come, my dear girl. Am I so unattractive as a husband, rich, powerful? Consider it carefully. I don't expect your answer now at once. I'll come back tomorrow and every day for a week. But if at the end of that time your answer is not yes, your father's fate is in your hands. A charming memory to haunt you for the rest of your days. Goodbye, dear girl. See you tomorrow. Well, there be people who's scared of mice, and others who's frightened of cockroaches, and even some of them don't fancy fleas. I'd rather have all they together than two flights of stairs. Won't be so far for you to go down, so what are you grumbling about? You like to live near the skies, eh? Mm, as far as possible from the street. Why? There was plenty of exercise going up and down. You never go out. Your master doesn't anyway. Where is he now if he's not out? You don't mean to say he's gone out for once. Mm -hmm. As it's a fine night, he thought he may risk it. He's got to be very careful. <coughs> Count of his bronchitis. My grandmother's got bronchitis. Ah, she's not the woman she was. Your grandmother? Yes. People live a long time around these parts. Oh, my master will be pleased about that. What's happened? He's here. He's seen me. He saw me at the fair. I was fool enough to go there. Did he see you come up here? I don't know. I don't know. Yes. There he is, outside now, waiting for me. Caught like a rat in a trap. He's coming for me now. I know he is. Is there no way of escape? The roof! My one chance! You stay here and hold him off! Good day, Nathaniel. The master in? My master? Mr. Stephen Hawke. Oh, him? Oh, I left his service weeks ago. So now you're traveling with him as his friend, eh? Who said I was traveling with him? I do. I'm living here alone. So I see. Where is he? I saw him into the door below. Did you see him come up the stairs? No. You better look down the stairs again. That's the hat and coat he was wearing when I saw him come in. So he has been here. Is he here now? Where is he? You're looking for him, not me. Why should I help you? Quite right. I'll help myself. What are you going to do? Wait till he comes back. Who are you and what are you doing here? Oh, my arm. What are you hiding behind your back? Uh, bread, eh? Oh, for heaven's sake, don't hand me over to the runners. A thief. Nice company for me to find myself in. It was for my children. They're starving. The runners saw me. They're after me now. Don't let them catch me, sir, please. But you're a thief. And prison is what you deserve. Well, you don't know what prison means, sir. Locked up like that, it's like being in the tomb. For aught anyone knows, you might be dead. For aught anyone knows, you might be dead. Yes, that's true. And if people think you're dead, they cease to take an interest in you, eh? Yes, sir. Dreadful. You wouldn't send me to that, sir. No, my poor fellow. Cruelty was never part of my nature. Here, give me that bread, and I'll hold them off while you escape. This way, quick. He must be at the last. Go, go quickly. May heaven reward you, sir. Go. Pity, sir, pity. I am innocent. You tell that to the magistrate. Let me go. Oh, not with, have you? Make yourself at home. You don't want me to be uncomfortable, do you? No. Oh. <laughs> 
still determined to stay here and see if he comes? I am. Oh, well. <laughs> Not that I blame you. Cheer up, boys. First 15 years is the worst. I ain't got a chance to find out. I've only got 10. What are you cribbing about? How long have you got? Only one year. Blimey. He's a blooming amateur. Talks as if he wished he'd got more. Fancy putting us to work with a raw recruit like him. Yes. Won't my people be awfully upset? Have you seen the menu today, old fellow? No. Wednesday, pea soup day. Two spit peas in a pint of water, and stir a little thick. Mm, well, I'm not complaining. Look at the parson talking. I'm quite contented here, thank you. I can't make the parson out. He seems to like it here. Perhaps he's married. <laughs> There's someone to see you. Who? Who is it? Look at him. The wife's found out where he is. You can talk him through the grill for about five minutes. It's a him. Just come to tell you that the party we were waiting for has changed his mind and gone back to London. Have you? Uh, but I have some other news that may not please you so much. Oh, what is that? It's about Julia. Julia? She's to be married. To him? No, 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 to the other. To Archer. Why? Where and when? Oh, any day now. And God knows what for. He can't be for his beauty. No. Not for his beauty, no. But I think I have an idea why she is doing it. And I've got to stop it. But you can't in here. There are always a way of getting out, my dear Nathaniel. Yes, but have you found them? No, not yet. But I shall. Be ready to return home at any moment. You mean to say that after all the trouble we took to get away, you're going to stick your neck in the news again? After what you've told me, I've got to get out of here. Well, it's your neck, and I suppose you can do what you like with it, but... You stand ready with a buggy to leave immediately. Understand? Oh. Your wedding dress has come, Miss Julia. Has it? Don't you want to see it? I shall see it soon enough. Why, you've been crying. Oh, don't cry, Miss. It breaks my heart. I've just been thinking. That's all, Emma. The wonderful dreams we have. They never seem to come true. My marriage. To think it would be like this. Yes, Mr. Archer isn't my idea of a fairy prince either. Why you have to marry him, I don't know. Please, Emma. It's sufficient for you that I'm going to marry him. But Mr. Matthews, he loved you and loves you still. No. That's all over and done. Just like one of those soap bubbles we used to blow. All beautiful colors and nothing inside. Bubbles that disappear into nothing as if they'd never been. And Mr. Archer, what sort of a bubble do you call him? More like a bladder of lard, I think. Oh, why did Mr. Matthew go away and leave you like this? I told you, he had something to do. Well, whatever it is, he seems to have done it all right. Oh, no. No, don't say that. Please, God, that's not true. If it is, all I'm doing now will be wasted. But why do you say his work is finished? Because, miss, he's just coming up to the front door now. Emma, don't let him in. Tell him I'm away in the country. Anything only. Don't admit him. Oh, do see him, miss, just for my sake. No, no, Emma, I won't. I won't. Is your mistress at home? No, sir. She's away in the country. That's what she told me to tell you. Then you mean she is in? Well, that's what I mean, but that is not what I've told you. Well, thank you, Emma. God bless you. Where shall I find her? Oh, I mustn't tell you that, sir. But I may tell you where you won't find her. Well, where's that? Well, you won't find her anywhere in the house, except on the terrace. But I mustn't let you go there, sir, because she forbade me. Well, out of my way, woman. Oh, unhand me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 
Matthew. Julia, is this terrible thing true? What terrible thing? They tell me you're marrying Miles Archer tomorrow. Why shouldn't it be true? Because it's impossible. Besides, Julia, you can't do it. You know you can't. I love you, Julia. You talk like this now, but a few weeks ago when you were going away, who was it insisted that everything was finished? Wasn't it you? My dear, don't you understand? I was at my wit's end. My father had just been killed and murdered. I felt it was my duty to track down the man who'd done it. That seemed to me more important than... Did you find him? No. Oh, thank heaven. Thank heaven. Why do you say that? What do you know? Look at me, Julia. Julia, you know who your father really is? Yes. But I can only think of him for all his kindness to me. I would give anything to save him. Julia. Julia, my darling, listen to me. I know that he's the notorious spinebreaker, that he ought to be dead a hundred times. But I also know that his death cannot bring my father back to life. That alive or dead, it cannot alter my love for you. Let's forget all that happened in this house before I left and start our lives all over again, together. Together? Oh, no, what am I thinking about it? It's impossible. I have given my word. Throw away your whole life for a word. Julia, there's something more in this. Why are you marrying this man? I have promised. You promised to marry me. And nothing would have made me break that promise. I'm not like you. Why did you promise? I love him, I tell you. Julia, tell me the truth. Am I responsible to you for my actions? Let me go. Julia, you said just now that you'd do anything to save your father. That has nothing to do with it. I wonder. Anyway, that's just what I'm going to try and find out. He gets later every day with our supper. He waits till it's dark so as we can't see what's in it. We can smell it though, can't we, Parson? You men are always complaining. I'm quite content. Blimey, sir, you have come then. Good evening, nurse. Not so much talk from you fellas. Turn your horse, they got wings. Well, use your whip. Try and persuade him with the hat. Is that all, Mr. Archer? Yes. See that I'm not disturbed. I want to have a quiet evening. <laughs> My last night as a bachelor. Huh? Exactly, sir. Unless that's somebody of importance. I'm not in. Very good, sir. Mr. Matthew Trimble. I'm glad to see you. This saves me from the unpleasant necessity of having to send for you. Indeed? Yes. You've been absent from London for some weeks. What have you been doing? Looking for the man who killed my father. Oh. A very dangerous occupation. Did you find him? Yes, and I've got some news for you. Good news, I hope. The very best. The spinebreaker is dead. Dead? Oh, so you killed him, eh? Well, my young friend, supposing I clap you into prison on a charge of murder, what then? Yes, come on. I admit it, I killed him. He's dead. Come on, why don't you tell your men? It does not suit my convenience. Well, very well, I'll tell. Wait! Ah, I thought so. You don't want your men to hear. You don't want the spinebreaker to be dead. You want him to be alive. What do you mean? I mean that the spinebreaker and Stephen Hawke are one and the same. That Julia is going to marry you because you blackmailed her into consenting. You realize what you're saying? Yes, I do. And supposing I do admit it, what can you do? Persuade the young lady to change her mind? You miserable rat. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead and try. Or perhaps you've already tried. You see, my excitable young friend, I hold the whip hand. 
You may have it now, but I haven't finished yet. I've got till tomorrow to prevent this marriage. And I shall move heaven and earth to do so. Good evening, Archer. Stephen Hawke! Pardon the intrusion, but the window was open. And after all, what is ceremony among good friends? Don't ring that bell. Make the slightest move or sound, and I'll blow your brains out. I thought you were dead. I know you did. That's why I'm here. I've been away on government business. You didn't know I was in the government service, did you? But I was. I should be still. But I heard rumors vague rumours that you were to be married tomorrow. And who do you think the silly gossip mongers coupled your name with? No, no, don't try to guess. I'll tell you with my daughter, Julia. You can't bluff me, Hawk. I know who you are and why you're here. But you're too late. She becomes my wife tomorrow. You're clever, Archer, but not clever enough. You're right. I am the spine breaker. So many I've come to grips with. Lord Trelawney's son, with his skinny little arms. Lady Kingsmead with her white flabby shoulders. Sir Geoffrey London with a tough back, but brittle. It went just like the rest. And now, you. You, you shall have your way. I'll give her up. I, I won't marry her. After having made her promise, hardly a gentlemanly thing to do, eh? But still, if you wish to cancel the affair, what can I do but accept? So come, we'll shake hands on it, eh? Won't you shake hands with me? It's time we got to grips. So long since we met. Too proud, eh? Then I must take it. <laughs> oh, you're breaking my arm! Are you oh. frightened, Archer? You're the only one who has found me out before it was too late. All the others discovered my secrets after I demonstrated my skill. You are luckier. You are about to watch the whole process. Yes. Oh, not that! Not that. Oh! Oh! <laughs> but Julia, darling, your father's hidden away safely. Nobody knows where he is, not even Archer. And my promise? A promise given under threat. And you want to marry the girl whose father caused your father's death? Oh, Matthew, could there ever be happiness for us? Sooner or later they'll find him and then... What's that? The law. There, he's the spine breaker. Arrest him. Well, this is nonsense. What madness are you talking? I arrest you with the murder of Miles Archer. But you're mad. A mistake has been made. A mistake has been made, gentlemen. Allow me to rectify it. If you value your lives, you won't move. Matthew, Julia, my coach is outside on the road. Off you go, both of you. But, Father... Don't argue. Do as I tell you, or by heaven I... Now move over this way a little, so that I can see you. <laughs> move quicker! <laughs> well, gentlemen, you're searching for the spinebreaker. You found him. Yes, you found him, but you haven't caught him yet. What's going on here? He's just had the spine break escape through that window. What are you talking about? He's there behind the pistol. We followed him from Ellsbury Jail. Come on, Hope. The game's up. Ah, my friends from captivity. So you've arrived too. Each eager to be the first, eh? You better join my friends over there. Well, why do you hang back? I'm here to be taken. Why don't you take me? It's no use, Hawk. You'll have to give in. There are six of us, and you've only got one shot in that pistol. Yes, but each of you has only got one life. Which of you is going to give in? Well, which is it to be? You of the quaking knees? Or you with a loud voice? Or you the brave man who wants the others to take all the risks? Or even you, you pale-faced underling? Oh, oh, boy. Boy. You must do something.
something for him? There's nothing we can do. No. Something I should have told you years ago when I adopted you. Adopted me? Yes. That makes a difference, eh? You're not really my daughter. As if that would make any difference. I might have known you'd say that, but it makes me happy. Master! Master! <laughs> 